I'm Courtney Fingar, editor of FDI Magazine. I'm here in Tokyo for the 2012 annual meetings of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank. Finance ministers and other officials from around the world have gathered here to discuss the hot topics in the global economy. We've been speaking to a few of them about FDI and other trends. You can watch the footage here on FDIintelligence.com. You can also read our full coverage in the printed version of the magazine as well as here on our website. Enjoy. Thank you very much for joining us here on FDI Magazine's uh, online IMF coverage. Welcome. Thank you. Ple um, pleasure. Well, we were discussing that you'll be hosting the event in a few years' time. What do you think we'll be talking about at that point? Where will we be in the global economy? Well, hopefully we'll be uh, in the path to recovery um, and a different uh, mood than we're seeing here in Tokyo where uh, we, I think uh, we all know what needs to be done, but then uh, the appropriate policies are, are, uh, are um, you know, m meet the political restrictions. So perhaps the uh, important decisions are being made in Berlin or in Brussels or in uh, Beijing or in Washington. But uh, I think these are important uh, meetings so as to uh, know the extent of, of what the policy making can do and the global implications uh, for emerging markets such as the Peruvian one. So I think uh, these are very timely discussions. Uh, hopefully we'll see some light at the end of the tunnel. Still the world is quite uh, shaky and hopefully in Lima in 2015 uh, things will look differently. You know uh, the industrialized economies will be recovering and the emerging markets will keep up their rhythm of, of dynamism uh, growing fastly. What about the present time? What do you expect to be the outcomes of this year's meetings and what can Peru bring to that discussion? Well, I, I think uh, uh, it, it's interesting because we've been talking to uh, different investors and, uh, and some from Europe and, and usually uh, it's, it's the, the world upside down. Now, usually uh, they used to ask me about our, our troubles and the discussion has been wh what's going on in your country. So uh, uh, I think um, um, decisions need, need to be taken, uh, the, some hard decisions uh, regarding the trade-off between um, uh, restoring credibility uh, through the policies that are being pursued. Investor confidence needs to uh, recover um, and that's something that still is absent. And uh, trying to decipher ways to grow out of this crisis. Um, uh, we're seeing no, no growth engines anywhere, um, even China, wh who's been the main uh, responsible for you know, um, uh, pulling the uh, world economy, is, is facing troubles. So uh, for an emerging economy such as Peru's, uh, it's critical what happens in the rest of the world. Half of our performance really is based on external events. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, for instance, one point less of global growth chops away one point in our growth. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, uh, we are growing very fastly. Um, uh, so far we've grown the first half of the year over 6%. Our prospect is to, be, to grow this year 6% and 6% the next year. Uh, this is assuming that there won't be a, 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 an implosion or, 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 or a collapse in, in global conditions. We're already taking into account a slowdown in, in world growth. Our, our conser our, we have conservative uh, estimates of world growth and commodity prices. And we hope that uh, things get better, I think. Uh, but we still see downside risks that are quite big and large. And hopefully um, we'll see in the next few months decisions being made and, uh, and, uh, and then uh, appropriate policies being pursued uh, in the future. And what about foreign direct investment in, in Peru? You've, because you have been a, a big growth economy the past few years, you've done quite well on the FDI mm -hmm. perspective. How are you hoping to promote the country for investment now and what are your priority areas for investment? Uh, I think um, now it's critical for us to attract uh, investment, although there's a negative side because of we're receiving uh, external uh, flows uh, above 7% of GDP. And, and these flows are, are affecting our exchange rate uh, that is uh, appreciating them. Um, and that obviously harms the, the, the tradable sector, the export, the export sector. So are you sector. overheated for FDI? Not really, because I think we still have lots of uh, needs and, uh, and our domestic savings is not uh, high enough. So we need a 
uh, external flows, uh, primarily long term and FDI, uh, is important. Actually, we reach a, a peak in the first half of the year. Uh, we got investment 7% uh, of GDP, which is um, quite, quite important. That's a third of the, of the total investment that we get in a country. Uh, both public uh, and uh, domestic investment. So um, I, I think it's critical for us to be able to use that investment, FDI, to close our infrastructure gap. Uh, and this is more urgently given the fact that uh, the world won't be, be growing at rates that we've been become used to. And we need to close those gaps and to be able to reap the benefits from the openness that our country has pursued. Uh, we're one of the most open economies in Latin America. And we've pursued uh, many free trade agreements with um, most of our, of our trading partners. So we need to facilitate trade, we need to have uh, modern ports, um, um, we need to have infrastructure in place uh, to avoid uh, growth bottlenecks. Energy is a very important sector for us. And we have, uh, we've been working um, uh, t towards having a portfolio of projects that are attractive for investors. So I think uh, FDI is a key ingredient uh, in our uh, growth strategy and this past year we've been quite active uh, doing road shows um, overseas, we've been here in Asia, uh, we've been in Europe uh, and the US um, and last week we just had a Arab League uh, uh, South American summit mm -hmm. and we were discussing with the um, um, wealth funds from the uh, uh, Arab uh, League countries in particular from the uh, uh, Emirates and uh, United Arab Emirates and, uh, and Qatar, their interest in investing in our country. So in you're seeking sovereign wealth fund investment? Yes, yes, and, and they're looking into markets that are attractive and, uh, and it happens that we are a good, good history. Um, we have the lowest uh, spread in, in Latin America, even lower than, uh, than Chile. And, uh, and it's uh, something unthinkable. We have uh, our risk perception is lower than France, Italy, Spain. So I think conditions are set for uh, attracting investment. Uh, we have, um, as I we've mentioned uh, to you in past occasions, uh, a very enabling um, legal framework that uh, attracts investment. Uh, in our constitution, we have uh, equal treatment for uh, foreign and domestic investors. Uh, and uh, there's, there's no controls, so there's uh, total uh, openness in our capital account to uh, have access to exchange rate, to be able to uh, repatriate dividends and the profits. Uh, and we think uh, this uh, uh, pays off eventually. And um, so FDI is, is attracting FDI uh, from Asia and from other countries um, is quite important in our growth, in our growth story. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very Good much. Luck. Pleasure, thank you.